What up, folks? What it do? Welcome to another episode of the best advice ever podcast. Yeah, with your boy, comedian Mike Goodwin, the bowtie comedian. And as I've been starting the podcast here recently, starting with a segment entitled The Mind of Mike. I was checking out some news, doing some reading, and I ran across this nice little nugget, this little ditty. Y'all may be familiar with the actor by the name of uh, Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino, from what is being reported, is expecting to be a dad for the fourth time. That's wonderful. The part that comes a little more problematic is at 83. Yeah. Yeah, Al's 83. This says Al Pacino is getting ready to be a father for the Scarface actor. Say hello to my love friend. And his girlfriend, I'm not even trying to pronounce her name, are expecting a baby. His girlfriend, let's see how old Al Pacino's lady is. Hello, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> so we'll play a little game out there, people. If Al Pacino is 83, what age? Now, it has to be an age where a woman and pregnancy go well together. You know, the older the older women get pregnancies become a lot more difficult. So you got to suspect there's an age where the optimum pregnancy window is pretty open. I would think that eliminates anything above 40. 40 would cut out unless on the on the on the on the younger side of 40 43 44 42 ish so say we knock 40 out now you definitely can't be 83 with an 18 year old woman that just i'm not there was a joke that came to my mind about a particular state i'm not gonna do that joke because i may have Listeners from the fine, fine states. I'm not going to make any comments. Two states just came to mind. <laughs> so 18 and 83, that just, 1883 was a year. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with what significant things that happened in 1883. So I would eliminate that. So you can probably be in the 20s. 20. 83 years old. That's half. Like, that's not even half of your age. All right. Enough of this. The the the, the woman is, is 29. So we'll go ahead and give her 30. 30 years old. 30 years old. 83. This man is 50 years older than the person that he's... De- Can you imagine the conversations? I don't even think that would be like your grandfather. That would be like your great-grandfather. 83. Becoming a dad for the fourth time? Wow. So that's what's going on out here in the world. So the, the pair was spotted leaving a restaurant together in Venice, California. She said she is eight months pregnant. Oh, she's a she's a movie producer too. She's a movie producer. 
I wonder, was she pushing him in a wheelchair? <laughs> Holy smokes. Like my wife is three years younger than me. Three years. And I got to eat my Wheaties. So 53 years? You should say something when I was growing up. That is an accurate description of, of, of what this situation is. Go red day. This man 83 and he's dating a 29 year old. Go red day. Go red day. Come on, somebody. Bro, you got a 29-year-old girlfriend and she pregnant? Go red day. <laughs> it's the situations in life. I don't even know how to spell that word. I know what it means. It, it means a, a variety of things. That's especially. I'm not familiar with the, the language of other regions in our country. I mean, I'm familiar with the Northeast, you know, the, it, growing up as a young African-American, the hip hop culture was, was very influential. So I knew like New York had terminology. There's terminology that communicates. We're about to get this paper. About to get these ducats. That's money. And there's a variety of words. You know, we got the, the burner. Had the flash, the burner, the heat. Those are weapons, guns, right? The West Coast, I think their terminology, I think we were very well acquainted with the beach scene, the surfer scene. It's gnarly. It's rad. We about to hang low, hang loose, hang loose. I think I remember the hang loose. It used to be a, like a like an alpha sign if you're familiar with the fine gentleman <laughs> of Alpha Phi Alpha. But even the, the South Carolina Gamecocks, they do this. It's, it's hang loose. It's the sign of a hang loose. I remember those T-shirts. When I was a child, it was like another one with a guy that was like hitchhiking with a huge thumb, keep trucking. I used to remember seeing these these t-shirts in the back of magazines, like have a nice day with the little yellow smiley face. I'm gonna go ahead and Google some retro t-shirt designs and and that, that, yeah, that that was that's what what came to mind, hang loose. But those T-shirts came to mind because I used to look at them all the time. Never bought any of them, but they were always being advertised in comic books, mad magazines. I don't know if y'all were big mad magazines, folks, but I got down with the mad magazines. But in the South, there's a vernacular and go red day. Like if we just celebrated, I don't know if you celebrated, but the, the, the Denver Nuggets won their first. NBA title and Uncle Jeff, Jeff Green, there's a play pretty early. I think it was in the game on a fast break and, and Jeff dunked it. I mean, I'm talking about he with all the velocity and the ferociousness of a dunk, like a one hand boom sandwich, right? And when he dunked, that was an example of go red day. Man, that boy dunked that ball. So it's a it's a, a exclamation. It's a kind of astonishment, like uh, of uh, delight. Go red, like you take a bite of a cake and it's soft, moist. People don't like the word moist. Word makes people very angry, but soft, moist. Delicious cakes. Cake's so good, you'll probably take a bite and say, Go Red Day. For some reason, Go Red Day has taken over my podcast. So we're, we're going to transition. Oh, that's how my mind works. See what's happening in my mind? 
But the other thing that was very interesting for me this weekend, I actually went to a MLS game, Major League Soccer. Went to the Queen City of Charlotte to watch the Charlotte Football Club. That's the name of the team. Very, very pedestrian name, Charlotte. And I'm a, I'm, I'm sort of a fan. Me and soccer, are, are we do a little dance. Like, I know soccer. We went out on a couple of dates, but it wasn't nothing serious. You know, we never were in a relationship. I might have got to, like, the second base with soccer. That's a weird analogy. But me and soccer, you know, we 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 were very casual, very casual. I'm off my most interest. I'm most interested in soccer. Football is during the World Cup. If the uh, United States is contending, if we're competitive, if we're in the fray, it's like watching March Madness and your team's not playing. Like I'm gonna watch it. Oh, I'm going to watch March Madness, but maybe like the NIT. Like if my team's in it, I'm watching it. But if it's not, I, I, I'm not. I'm probably, I might watch the championship game, right? That's how I am with soccer. But soccer, football, I grew up with guys that played. Good buddy of mine, Anthony Washington, grew up on the same street. He's a, a young footballer to the degree Anthony was, I think, recently in London to watch a match a guy graduated with a uh, played at the Naval Academy, played football at Naval Academy, but he was a, a soccer guy. Aston heaven, Aster, Aston. He played soccer. I never was a soccer guy. Another guy was really, I think it was a great soccer player for, for what I know about soccer guy by the name of David Zamorski got a scholarship to Hampton, Sydney, played soccer. I actually worked with a guy that went to college with David and played soccer with David, who was also the coach of the girls' soccer team over at Heathwood Hall where I worked. So I have some connections with soccer. Went to college, Lambda University. that doesn't have American f- football. We have s- football. We have soccer. So I would go, you're not a buddy, uh, Kyle Gumby, they would play. He was on the soccer team. Plus, I knew a lot of those guys. Like, Rory comes to mind. There was a guy named Otis, Stefan. There was a lot of guys that were from Jamaica. Uh, where were the, Rory was from, like, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Like, a lot of, a lot of international students would come and play the soccer at at college, man. These guys were great guys. Matter of fact, me and or- Rory were, were in summer orientation leaders, so that's why he comes to mind. Think about Wins- Winslow Stryker. Now, he wasn't a soccer player for the team, but he was an older guy that was from the islands that was, you know, he was at the games. I go to the games, and then I can remember these other young women, Rhonda and I, I – I should know her sister's name, Melissa, Rhonda and Melissa. I think they were from Jamaica. There was something from Trinidad or somewhere that wasn't the United States. They were out at the soccer pitch at the match. So I'm, I'm pretty cool. So one of the, the, one of the Charlotte to see this game. Interesting enough. I was invited. I was the trophy husband this weekend. Went with my wife, my wife went up there with my wife. She got invited, but we were doing the sweet life, like box seats. So they play at the 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 Carolina Panthers Stadium, but they had the box seats. They had the the real deal, and I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared to to walk into a spot when they had sushi for just hey, come get you some sushi. As a matter of fact. They had like flaming hot Cheeto sushi. Like that was one of the options. They had all wings. They had like mumbo sauce, like DC mumbo sauce. They had uh, dry rub. They had hot water. 
They had mac and cheese. I was not ready. They had the open bar. They had options. That's what I'm telling y'all people. And I'm on my program. And my program is related to the best advice of the day. And I wasn't ready. I was not, I was not prepared for that sweet life. But again, it was a little odd to me because Charlotte doesn't have, well, they have a mascot. They, they, they're the Charlotte football club, but they were playing the Seattle Sounders. Now the Sounders, that sounds like a mascot. Charlotte does have a mascot and it's a King Minty. Minty as in fresh breath. That's what that, but Minty as in the bank system. Charlotte is well known for the banking industry. So they have a mascot that basically is a soccer ball. That's a King. So there's a crown. There's a Cape. There's like a medallion. He looks Kind of like a soccer pimp. That's what he they didn't really think it all the way through. I'm not and they are the queen city. Why can't they why can't it be Queen Minty? Huh? But we live in a paternalistic, oppressive society. That's why I told somebody. That's why in the Queen City they got the King Minty. And they didn't empower the Queen to be a mascot. Because that's not how we we think very men oriented. <laughs> I'm going down a weird road. But yeah, so it was, it was a little while, a little while. And it, but it was very cool. Very cool. Uh, they have tremendous tradition. And I was at the game with a guy that's a fan. That's a legit soccer fan. He's a Charlotte football club fan. They got the season tickets. So I enjoy going to events with somebody who's like a tour guide. And can, and three goals were scored on both sides. So the, the game ended in a tie, 3-3. And it was, it, was, it was exhilarating. It was very, very enjoyable game. But it leads me to the best advice of the day ever that I'm going to give you. And that is, that advice is simply, to practice delayed gratification. One thing I'm learning or, or, or is being reconfirmed to me that the story of the tortoise in the hare is an excellent allegory for life. Not quite sure what allegory means, but it felt good in the moment. It's a depiction of if you conduct your life in this manner, Success is inevitable. Remember, I remember the story of, of the tortoise and the hare. It's very, very familiar childhood story. Hopefully, they're still telling children today. But basically, to summarize the story, the hare is very fast, very talented, very gifted, a lot of charisma, a lot of savoir faire just 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 looks like a leader but very boastful very boastful very very dogmatic in terms of communicating how great of a runner he is and then you got the hair not fast not dynamic pretty boring pretty similar if, if you're a fan of, of, of basketball like i am pretty similar to the San Antonio Spurs of the Tim Duncan era. The Tim Duncan, put a little bit of David Robinson in the latter in the latter years of Dave. But Tim Mono Ginobili, Tony, Tony, Tony Parker, Sean Elliott, Avery Johnson, you know those guys. You can even throw your boy in there, Stephen Jackson, Stephen Jackson, Malik Rose. The list goes on and on. The guys that played for the Spurs. And the Spurs were not very exciting to watch. Similar to the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets don't have the most dynamic brand of basketball. I enjoy watching it because they win. And they are dominant. <laughs> 
I enjoy that type of style. I enjoy the methodical plotting. But I do like the running, gunning, wheeling, and dealing. I like the LeBron, LeBron James. I like, you know, I like those. I like a variety of styles, right? But there's a race. And the hare, the r- rabbit, runs very fast. Gets so out of, beyond the pack. I don't even know if it's the pack. I think he just run against the hare. Two people in a race. I don't know why they're running a marathon, but he's out there. So far that he's like, you know what? Let me get up under this tree, take a nap. Let me rest. I'm so talented. I get up from my little nap and win the race. And then you got the turtle. They can't nap. The turtle just one step at a time. That's how everybody operates. <laughs> People say that. There's a comedian has a joke like that. I'm going to do living one day at a time. Yeah. Who, how else can you live? That's that's the way days work. But the, the, the tortoise, just slow, steady, consistent. And by the end of the story, the tortoise wins because it never gets off course. It never rests on its laurels. My comedy career is very similar to the tortoise. I never stopped doing comedy. Those guys I started doing comedy with, people I know, even if they didn't even start doing comedy with people that I met along the way, they've taken years off, two years, six months. I never stopped. I just kept doing comedy. I just kept going on stage and telling jokes. Never took a break. Never took time off. In terms of like moving away from comedy, like I, I'm on a break right now, clearly. But I just kept steady, slow and steady. And that's what delayed gratification is. There's a, um, I did some some reading on it. There's something called the the marshmallow experiment. I don't know if you've seen this. It it would be very entertaining if you haven't. Just Google marshmallow experience put it in the youtube basically what happened there was a scientist that took some children four and five year olds put them in a room sat a marshmallow in front of them and said if you don't eat this marshmallow you'll get a second marshmallow the scientist then leaves the room leaves the room for 15 minutes and the results are pretty pretty telling and it's very hilarious because if you've seen some of this footage some children as soon as the man closed the door that marshmallow is right into my gone bye holla back marshmallow gone that's the kind of person i am don't leave your marshmallow don't leave your marshmallows around me true player for real x x ask but 15 minutes, the kids are sitting there and they jumping up. They're doing all kinds of things to remove their thoughts and attention from that marshmallow. Now, after 15 minutes, the scientist returns. And what they found is the individuals who were able to resist the temptation of eating the marshmallow were rewarded with a second marshmallow. And basically, that is what delayed gratification is is the ability to resist temptation of instant pleasure. And I wasn't available to delayed gratification at the, at the Charlotte, <laughs> at the Charlotte football club. Matter of fact, I got on the scale Friday and, and had some pleasing results. And I went to this, this, the soccer match and came back, was a little bit disappointed in myself. <laughs> a lot of, ah, Come on, Mike. But delayed gratification. The pain of discipline versus the ease of distraction. And so I just think that it's important to begin to practice delayed gratification. At whatever level of your life you can do it. Uh, we just had a men's conference at our at our church. And we had a, a panel that was talking about mental health and they made a great point that if somebody's struggling, what, what can you do if you're having anxiety and you're having really some challenges and you, you feel uncomfortable, even to the degree to not come to church, like, well, what's some advice? What would you do? And one of the advice 
something that was given was baby steps. Let's get some small victories. Let's get small victories. I think that's a way to practice delayed gratification. An example of this, I'm, I'm doing this. I, I want to read more. I want to read more. And a way that I could do delayed gratification, I, I just jump on that on that social media, man. I social media to me is like the the autobahn in Germany. Like once I get on that thing, man, I'm I'm flying. Like I just I can't get off the exit. <laughs> so one way to help me with that is to get things done. Like, hey man, you can't get on that autobahn until you've done X, Y, and Z. So it's important to establish some practices but one of the best ways to practice delayed gratification is small steps baby steps here's some small wins the next way to practice delayed gratification it is to do it consistently to do it consistently i, I i'm again i'm one of these main i guess call myself a maniac but I, I really have these out there kind of ideas one of the ideas i had recently was when I go going to the gym, kettlebell swings, which are very difficult, but it's a kind of a full body exercise that's very beneficial. And I told myself, hey man, let's do a hundred kettlebell swings. That's a great place to aspire to, but let's start off. Let's just do 50. But there's a time in my life where I would have said, let's do a hundred and would have been disappointed in myself if I did less than a hundred in this, some arbitrary rule I've given myself. It's like, let's be consistent, do what you can do to be consistent. If it takes you to sit down for 10 minutes to read and you can consistently do that, we'll do that. Because if you continue to do it, that time will increase. But oftentimes we got these big grandiose ideas and we don't do the small little minute detail to make it everything that's big start small and i think that what i'm learning is the power of delayed gratification even with what i'm doing with my weight loss i i'm eating very boring boring and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm sorry to keep talking about this people but boring oh it's so boring only thing that's excited, I put a little bit of sauce, a little teriyaki, sesame, ginger, set teriyaki sauce on my chicken. But it's boring. Same thing, boring. But it's giving me the results. I'm delaying gratification. I'm not going to get the crumble cookie like I want to go get. It's a new bakery opening up over in my area. They, they one, one bakery has discontinued itself, and they've added another bakery. It's a bakery by the name of Blue Flower. They had some outstanding cookies where well, the person decided to retire but then there's somebody called the the buttercream queen i cannot wait to be introduced to her but i just did this the other day the butt the butt cake nothing but butt they sent out a buy one get one free coupon and i went and i bought one and i got one free and i gave it to my kids and my wife, we were talking about, she was asking me about Father's Day. And she said, well, you know, what do you want to eat? And I was like, oh, I don't really want to go out. I want to kind of eat my regular, my regular degla, my regular boring program. And she was like, oh, you deserve a treat. You know, take a treat. I was like, it's not treat time. And she was like, well, you had a treat the other day. You had a butt cake. I said, I did not have a butt cake. <laughs> I asked you, did you want something because I knew I was going. And it it was actually, I, I and there was a possibility I was going to get one. I, I wasn't all the way determined <laughs> that I wasn't going to get one. I'm still up in the air. But when I went in there and bought the cake, I got one, one for a daughter, one for my son. Buy one, get one free. That's two. I didn't want to. It was like, okay, to get another one, do you want to spend the money for something you know, I was prepared to do the one, get the one free. I was going to get my wife one. But since she didn't want one, I'm like, I don't need the third. Delayed gratification. Now, and I like those bump cakes. They are very, matter of fact, real talk, transparency. My son ate his and put the little container in the trash, but there was cream. It still was icing in his, 
in his uh in his little package in his little ew, that don't ew, in the in the container. And I wanted that ice, and I was gonna go in that garbage, take my finger, attack that ice. I said, "No, man, stop, bro. I, I'm not, I'm not icing. Not gonna be the thing to take me out. I, I can't get victory over icing that somebody else is eating the cake. Like, come on, man, you. We better than this, Mike. So that is what I will leave with you today for the best advice ever." It's to practice delayed gratification. You can do that simply by taking small steps and being consistent. Hope you have enjoyed another episode of the Best Advice Ever podcast, y'all. I would love to hear from you. You can email me at info, info at comedian Mike Goodwin dot com. Again, that's I N F O at comedian Mike Goodwin. Dot com. Follow me on all the social media platforms. I'm at Bowtie Comedy on Facebook. I'm on Comedian Mike Goodwin. I'm on the tick of the talk, the face of the book, the U of the tube, the eye of the G. I'm out here in these social media streets. I'm also in the link at the end. I don't, I don't really go over there much. And I'm over there at the angry place, Twitter, man. They mad. That is a... Uh, MMA ring over there at Twitter. But again, thank y'all again for, for checking me out. For listening in on another episode of the Best Advice Ever podcast. I'll be back again next week. Same bat channel. Same bat time. Same bat place. You could have been anywhere in the world. But you're here with me. And I appreciate it. Until next time. Peace. <laughs>